Hello, everyone, and welcome to the February 2023 Q&A. My name is Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman. And if you're wondering what, where there was, there's a Q&A, where's the January Q&A? The answer is, I didn't get to it because of my birthday and planning the 24-hour live stream and all that type of fun stuff. So we kind of lost a month there, and that's my bad. My apologies. Uh, also, if this video seems a little bit shorter than some of the other Q&As have in the past, that's again... I forgot that February only has 28 days in it, so I thought I had a couple more days to let people ask questions and put stuff together, and then it was March, <laughs> which it is March today. So, sorry, I've been playing a lot of catch-up. There's been a lot going on. My apologies for that. But yes, if you were not aware, every month here on, you know, Titanium Legman on my channel, we do a monthly Q&A where channel supporters like patrons and members and whatnot are able to ask a question that I will then answer in a Q&A video just like this and publish for all of you to see. So if you've ever been curious, basic things like, what does Tom look like? Here I am. Hello. Uh, or like, just what are some of Tom's favorite hobbies? Why did he get into the or into the YouTube space? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Questions like that. This is the place where you'll see people asking them and me answering them. Uh, so we're going to go right in today. We have six questions that are nice, pretty short notice that I put this out here and y'all had some good questions. So thank you. <clears throat> um, we're going to start off with King Tony, who asks, what's a game that you don't think gets enough love for having done something unique compared to other games in the same genre? And you would think this being a channel that has had a lot of focus on tactical RPGs and JRPGs and things like that, that my answer would involve something in those genres, but that's not the case. It's not something that gets talked about a lot on the channel, but I'm a big shooter fan. I've played a lot of shooters over the years. Destiny is one of my favorite games of all time. Just did the Destiny 2 Lightfall stream yesterday. My icon is my guardian from Destiny. Played a ton of Halo in the past, played a lot of COD in the past, things like that. And it, there's a game that those of you who are in the gaming space should be familiar with, you'll at least have heard of most likely, but that I think fits the bill here, and it's Titanfall 2. I know people adore Titanfall 2, but that's only the people that know Titanfall 2. I'm one of those people. I got into it because of my buddy Dante, and we have since introduced the game to other people who really did enjoy it. But as far as games that don't get enough love for doing something unique in their genre... Titanfall 2 absolutely takes the cake. You've got Titans, big giant mecha that drop down onto the battlefield in the middle of a match or in the campaign, and you have these, suddenly the battle completely changes around this new threat, but it's not game-breaking in any way. You can still deal with it. You can still interact with it. Other players have their own Titans. It's super cool. Wall running, very smooth, very fluid, doesn't mess with your aim. So if you have a high skill level, that I never quite achieved, but I was getting there a little bit. Like you can pull off some truly crazy stuff by wall running and grappling and sliding and like you jump through the air, snipe someone, go into a slide, melee someone else. It's super, super cool. Very fast, very fluid. And then it's a game that in an era where you don't really see this anymore, and granted Titanfall 2 is a little bit older now, but still, had not only a stellar multiplayer, but also what I would argue is one of the best single player campaign shooter content pieces in gaming period like the campaign in titanfall 2 is phenomenal and anyone who's ever played it will tell you that it's like you actually have characters that you care about and like emotional story beats and it's simple don't get me wrong we're not like recreating the entirety of like the american epic or anything here but you've got good well-written characters that are plot focused but still have their own character development set in an interesting world with every mission having something different to it that makes it interesting and evolves the core gameplay without just being a gimmick. And there are some things that would be considered gimmicky, but they're done so well, it's just it just leaves you wanting more. It doesn't overstay its welcome. It has a good start, middle, and end. And when it's over again, all you want is more, but you're satisfied with what you had as well. And unfortunately, as much as, again, a lot of people do know Titanfall 2, it got completely overshadowed by other titans in the industry. No pun intended. And it isn't until we saw the release of Apex Legends that recursively Titanfall 2 got some traction and got some attention. We still don't have Titanfall 3 because Apex Legends is such a powerhouse moneymaker that 
Respawn isn't allowed to do anything else in that space. Maybe someday. Maybe someday. But, uh, yeah, I think Titanfall 2 is a standout example of an underappreciated, underloved genre piece. So, thank you for the question, King Tony. Much appreciated. Good one. Black51 asks, do you have any plans on how often you'll do community streams and what games you'd play on those? Very good question. And the answer is probably no more than twice a month. And that might seem low to some people. I was even thinking of saying like once a month. But the way I think about it is this. Like, anytime I do a community stream, that is a either a potential slot for like a game that we're covering actively so something like fire emblem engage or tactics ogre or whatever else we happen to be streaming at the time and big games like that each stream is important that's why it's been kind of hard to juggle engage and tactics ogre since they're both out so i have to consider that i also have to consider that whenever i would be doing a community stream it needs to be when the lion's share of people are going to be around because otherwise it just doesn't work as well. And that means that people who aren't around during that time could wind up feeling left out. So I don't want to do it too often. And not for nothing, but that's also often time that I'd be using to like work on projects like videos and whatnot. Or like spend time with Jane and maintain our life IRL or even potentially socialize. Like with my normal friend group who I've had for a long time. So I need to balance those things. Like we play D&D twice a month. If I have D&D every weekend or every other weekend and then like a community stream every other weekend, that's a lot of time spent. And that's a lot to say that makes it sound like I don't want to do community streams. And that's not the case. I don't want people to think that. I do. I loved doing a couple of community focused things that we've done recently, playing Smash and Mario Party, Mario Kart, the Elden Ring viewer run, which was small, but a ton of fun stuff like that. I do want to do more of, but uh, I don't think I can really mentally or like actual physical time space resource management wise do it too often so once or twice a month probably as things change maybe we can change that up but for now probably once or twice a month and then for now i think i'd stick to the things that have been working smash mario kart mario party again if we can get more people to do an elden ring viewer run with me or continue the elden ring viewer run things like that as the community grows Maybe that's where we can look at doing some bigger stuff like getting like Fall Guys private lobbies or like other party games like that where you can have a lot of people or like, I mean, I've seen people do, this is old now, I don't think people do this anymore, but like I remember seeing content creators would do like viewer PUBG games where they would just like spectate and like watch all the chaos go down and stuff like that. And if we had a platform to do something similar like that, that could be really fun. Uh, there's... Also, the possibility, going back to talking about shooters and stuff, like, in our first question, I would love to be able to do private games of, like, Destiny, you know? Have, like, me and other people in the Crucible slaying out, just, you know, skill, having fun, playing against each other. I think that'd be a blast. It'd be very reminiscent of, like, the old days of playing Halo and COD on Xbox Live, all that type of stuff. So, um, I would love to do that. I think those would all be really fun things. And, of course, I'm open to, like, suggestions as well because I don't know all the good par party games, community games out there. So let me know. But that's my loose thoughts on how often we do it and what we would do in them. So thank you for the question, Black. Very good. Brand Solar one asks, Will you play Terraria on the channel or the Calamity mod? I, I mean, it's a good question. I certainly don't have any plans at the moment. Um, I'm not opposed to it. But I hadn't really considered Terraria as an option on the channel. That could actually be a fun thing for a community stream. Huh. I'd have to look into that, I guess. Terraria is weird, because it's a game that, in high school... Because, yes, I played Terraria in high school. <laughs> Those of you youngins out there who are into it now. It's been around for a while. I got my friends into Terraria, because I thought it looked so cool. And it still looks so cool, and I still enjoy it when I play it. There's a Trixie in the camera. <laughs> um, but I get weirdly bored with Terraria. I don't know why. Everything about it says it's something that I would enjoy, but I, I just get bored. It's weird. So I'm hesitant to say that I would play it. I don't know what the Calamity mod does. So full disclosure there. I've got zero context for that. But I'm hesitant to say yes, because I wasn't planning on it. Just 
like because I hadn't thought about it, and because I've always had issues keeping engaged with Terraria. But it could be something that's worth a shot. Again, maybe as like a community thing, see how it goes. Maybe it piques my interest. I don't know. Could be worth a shot. So I won't write it off entirely, but there's no like active current plans. Put it that way. Thank you for the question, Brand Solar One. Sweet Monkey Juice asks, what are future games you plan on playing? Well, I mean, in terms of major releases just this year, FF16 and FF7 Remake Chapter 2. So long as Jane and I can get our hands on a PS5, absolutely bringing those to the channel. Again, I love Final Fantasy. I love the JRPG space. Far and away blows Western RPGs out of the water 99% of the time in the quality of writing, the quality of combat, the quality of the presentation, the actual mechanical like game functionality quality. It's always better. Always. There's always exceptions as well. Don't come at me. But you know what I mean. They're just going to be so much fun. FF16 looks amazing. I have absolute faith in Yoshi P to put out an excellent mainline entry in the series that isn't an MMO. And I do enjoy FF14 when I play it. And then, I mean, Remake Chapter 2, like, I think Final Fantasy VII Remake Chapter 1 was probably the best release of that year. Absolutely loved every second of it. I've been meaning to go back and play through it again. Now that I have it on PC, I could do that. And I, I expect Chapter 2 to be just as good. So, we'll definitely be playing those. Uh, and then I'd like to bring, in terms of slightly smaller releases, I'd like to bring Advance Wars to the channel. That's actually coming out, finally, um, soon. I don't remember the release date off the top of my head, but it's soon. I know that. And I mean, again, that's just a game from my childhood. It's by Intelligent Systems originally, so it has some of the similar vibe as the old school Fire Emblems. And it's just a fun game. I don't know that I'd do like a full stream series of it or guides or anything like that, but I'd at least like to check it out on the channel and show it off to you guys because I think it'd be so much fun. And that, if it has the online multiplayer that I think it does, that could be a fun one for community games too. But um, yeah, those are off the top of my head some new releases that are going to be coming out that I plan on doing. And then I've got a whole backlog of stuff. Like I want to play prime two and prime three for Metroid. I would love to do like Samus returns again for Metroid. I want to do the hex, uh, in the overall like inscription verse. Like there's a ton of stuff out there. I want to play, but I can sit here listing them. Just, I can just read the list of games to play in the future on the channel. And that could be a video. So, uh, we'll cut it there, but thank you. Sweet monkey juice for the question. Next up, we have Canadian Animator Guy, who says, Big excited for the Elden Ring DLC. If you could pick any game to receive a FromSoft-style DLC expansion, what would it be? And so originally, when I first read this question, I was sleepy. I was thinking, like, what game, what FromSoft game would I like to see get another expansion? So I had originally tailored my response in my head when I was first reading through the questions in that context. It's not what's being asked here any game to receive a FromSoft style DLC expansion. <sighs> I mean, that's tough, right? Because so much of FromSoft's gameplay design and DLC design and everything is rooted in the core gameplay of the Soulsborne as a genre. So taking that and applying it to the context of a different game that has a very different style is kind of hard conceptually for me to do. But I mean... Fire Emblem, like, imagine, just sit back and just think for a second about three houses and we get the story of those who slither in the dark fully fleshed out, like us actually dealing with them properly in the style of like a The Ringed City or um, Artorius of the Abyss or The Old Hunters, though that type of DLC experience in Fire Emblem? <laughs> Holy shit. Like, they could give so much good context to what is such an important force in the overall universe of Fodlin, of Three Houses, and really flesh it out in a way that there just obviously wasn't room for in the base game. Not like they couldn't have done it if they'd been given the time, they just didn't have the time and resources to do it, or they would have. That, I think, to me, would be one of the coolest things to do. I would also say Destiny. Destiny's had some really good expansions, though. So it doesn't feel like that is as needed. 
Lightfall notwithstanding, because uh, Lightfall is turning out to be pretty bad. But we'll talk about that probably in tomorrow's video. I want to do a first impressions of that. So I think Three Houses, right off the top of my head, is a game that I would love to see a FromSoft-style expansion for. So um, beyond that, if we're thinking the original context of the question that I was conceiving of it as, I'd love to see more Bloodborne. Like, having... I mean, really, I guess that would be... I would want it to be a second game. More Elden Ring, honestly. Just keep giving me Elden Ring. There's so much world there. We've got the Land of Reeds. We've got the Badlands. We've got past stuff. We've got future stuff. We've got stuff with the different gods. It seems like the new DLC is going to be focused on Mikolo, which is very exciting. But, like, give us, a, give us a DLC in the middle of the Shattering. Like, there's so much that they could do with that. So, in terms of FromSoft games, that's what I would want. But thank you for the question, Canadia. Very much appreciate it. And then, finally, IR Fine says, you know the Drill Chief. And for those of you who don't know... Fine always tosses me a wild card question where I can answer whatever question I want. Ah, sorry about that. I need to take a sip of water. Uh, Fine always tosses me a wild card question wherein I can just answer whatever question I want. And seeing as how we were just talking <laughs> about Destiny and seeing as how I've been playing the Destiny 2 Lightfall DLC in the last 24 hours and have a lot of thoughts about it, the question I'm going to answer today is, Tom, what is your personal favorite expansion in the history of Destiny? And this is Destiny 1 and Destiny 2. And, I mean, I have to say it's the Witch Queen. The Witch Queen is the expansion that came out last year. It is the suite of content that we've been playing through up until the release of Lightfall. And in terms of tone, of narrative threads coming together, of presentation, of threat, and then the seasonal content overall that came with it was, for the most part, top-notch. Some of the best that we've seen in the history of Destiny. And for those of you who play Destiny, the other two DLC expansions that might come to mind as competitors here would probably be The Taken King and Forsaken. Both very good. Don't get me wrong. But Witch Queen felt like the first time that the Destiny team at Bungie had a cohesion, a sense of co like narrative cohesion between their gameplay and their story and the lead up to everything that was happening that worked like they were able to get all of the pieces to fit together in the way that they have always been capable of but just never quite managed to do in the history of destiny prior to that the mystery the horror again narrative through lines that have only been talked about but have been talked about for years in the lore and suddenly are brought to the forefront in the gameplay just the gameplay itself felt so good there's just so much that was so good about witch queen that I have to say, by far, it's my favorite expansion. And that's probably, in large part, carried as well by the fact that the solo legendary campaign in Witch Queen was mm, one of my favorite pieces of solo content that I've ever done in Destiny. Excellent. So, 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 so good. Unfortunately, not being matched by Lightfall. But again, we'll talk about that tomorrow. So yeah, Destiny to the Witch Queen. Best expansion in the game's history, in my humble opinion. Thank you for the wild card question is always fine. And that, my friends, is the Q&A for February 2023. Thank you for your patience. Again, apologies that I wasn't able to get the, um, the Q&A. Man, my brain just shut down. Sorry that I wasn't able to get the Q&A for January out there. It just it got away from me. And by the time I thought about it, it was late and I hadn't even asked the questions yet. So, like, I just figured write it off. Uh, we're getting back into a normal schedule of uh, content cadence now with the 24-hour live stream done, all that type of stuff. We'll be back to doing videos regularly, getting sure, like, my supporter thanks are out on Fridays and, like, having more regularly scheduled streams, having the schedule up, all that type of stuff. We're getting back into the flow of having that moving normally now. It's been a weird couple of months. But so thank you so much for sticking around, for helping to grow the channel, for asking questions in videos like this, for watching videos like this, for watching my other videos, coming and hanging out in the streams. Like, it's all just been wonderful the past few months, and I've been really pushing myself to try and rise to the expectations that I feel like you guys have for the content for the channel, while not giving myself too much anxiety in the process, which isn't a balance I've quite struck yet, but we're getting there. <laughs> Uh, look for the Lightfall First Impressions tomorrow. I would like to do an Octopath Traveler 2 First Impressions as well, but I feel like I'm a little late on that at this point, so we'll see. 
And then, I mean, I've got a bunch of fire. I'm build stuff I want to do. More Tactics Ogre videos coming. The whole kit and caboodle. So stick around for that. That said, again, my name is Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman. I hope you all have a good night. Stay safe and healthy out there. And remember, be good to each other. Bye now. Don't mind that truck driving by. <laughs>